Oh my gosh, I'm offending Kurt Schlichter. I should stop. Es gibt ein Haus in Neu-Berlin, man nennt es Haus Abendrot. Es war der Ruin vieler guter Jungs, von mir, mein Gott, litt ich Not. So what I thought is, like, obviously there is a about the author section, and there's also an about me thing on his website. Is there a link to his uh, plenty of fish page? <laughs> no, but there is an actual hyperlink to his Twitter account. One thing that's really strange about this, there's like a intro thing, like a kind of manifesto, similar to that kind of thing. Preface. Is there a forward as well though? <laughs> Sadly, there is not an amateur. He thanks Ben Shapiro by name in these as well. Does he um, thank Lucifer? By name? Yeah. But one thing that's just really weird about them is I know for a fact that a big part of his about the author section in the back of this book is just copied from his website, but they contain hyperlinks. <laughs> So you know how in Sleeping Giant I put a bunch of fucking Wikipedia <laughs> yeah. hyperlinks in. He's actually done that here. They're actually in here. So all the things that you've done that you thought were just satire yeah. and a joke have actually yeah. been done. Kurt you know, beat me to it by a couple of years. Yeah. So basically, I figured like we could, we should probably. Hello, everybody. <laughs> We didn't see you there. Oh, hi there. We didn't see you come in. Uh, are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, obviously, we're reading... We're, we're, we'll get to that in a second. You can wait. <laughs> basically, he's copied the actual text from a website, put it into the book, and so you can see all of the hyperlink names and books and things like that. They all obviously have links to their, like, Wikipedia page or their, like, personal websites and stuff. <laughs> all... Try clicking them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pop it up on the screen. <laughs> I clicked Adam Baldwin. So is that, is that working? Yeah. And then nobody came up. I'm just going to leave our uh, Merry Christmas uh, bookmark oh, yeah. here. Very nice. Merry Christmas, everybody. Very festive. Yeah. Well, you know, I figured we're reading some fascist diatribe, mm. so, you know, not, what more could put us in the Christmas spirit than that? But it's what Jesus would have wanted, you know? Mm. Uh, violent fascist takeover of the United States. He would literally would have He wouldn't stop talking about it. He, he couldn't, start, he couldn't <laughs> get him off. <laughs> the yeah. Prince of Peace. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Prince of Peace. So, yeah, basically, I thought we could read through, like, very quickly read through and briefly kind of talk about it, because obviously I do accept probably most people don't really know who Kurt Schlichter actually is. That's probably fair. Um, I don't know who the fuck Kurt Schlichter yeah, is, so... really. I mean, do you think Kurt Schlichter really is? <laughs> Kurt Schlichter really? I think he looks at himself in the mirror and he sees himself. And it terrifies him deeply and, uh, and he flees from it every day of his life. What I thought might be kind of fun, if we remember to, is maybe read some of the reviews after we've read the book, <laughs> just, to see, yeah, be, yeah, just to see how we uh, compare and contrast mm. our, our viewpoint with their, uh, their yeah, that's a, that's reviews. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll quickly actually introduce the video. Um, so, hey guys, it's us again. We're back. <laughs> And we're bringing you a delightful new book, Kurt Schlichter's People's Republic, which I, for one, can't wait to. <laughs> I feel like, in a way, Maggot Hat Romance, Ladies First by Liberty Adams, our first allegedly female. <laughs> um, I feel like that was very much a kind of interlude, and we've gone from Blind Drunk 1.0, and now we're fully submerged into Blind Drunk 2.0. I feel like we're entering our post apocalyptic dystopia arc. <laughs> Maggot Hat Romance, that was the apocalypse. <laughs> and now we're we're in a post apocalypse. We're in an abandoned wasteland yeah. kind of environment. This one, I, I really feel that this is going to be quite rough. Mm. In the it, best possible. It, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, it seems like it's getting a lot more serious now. You know, a bit like, darker. A bit darker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the dark second act. Yeah, exactly. Empire. Empire. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, gone are the happy go lucky days of Boris Johnson's 72 versions. The carefree days of our youth. It's time to put away childish yeah. things. Yeah. So yeah, I think, you know, obviously, understandably, a lot of people probably have no idea who Kurt Schlichter is. I'm not hugely knowledgeable mm. on who he is, I don't know. I mean, really I think know. we can all be grateful for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're about to spoil 
that for you now if yeah. you don't know yeah. what Kirchlichter is. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, basically, Kirchlichter is a former military man. He's a political commentator. He's very right-wing. He's a fairly prolific author of fiction and non-fiction, although... I think the line between those two, <laughs> two right wingers is, uh, is quite blurred. We'll get into like the about the author section of this book. The way he presents himself, obviously, how he wants to be viewed is very obvious. But um, yeah, so I don't know any sort of thoughts and fears <laughs> going into this one. Many. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll start at the actually basically the final page, which is the <laughs> about the author section. I've always wanted to start one of these books at the final page, so yeah, this is a bit of a... Skip right to the yeah, end. It's a bit of a dream come true for me. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I figured I'd just let you okay. read this. So Thank you. That's there you go. very, very, very kind welcome. Of you. The fucking size of the font as well. <laughs> 215 pages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very generous. <laughs> about the author. Kurt Schlichter is a senior columnist for townhall.com. Which... <laughs> Hyperlink. Put a pin in townhall.com. I've got a few words about townhall.com. Mm. A stand up comic for several years. <laughs> Insert tips from <laughs> Schlichter's terrible stand up comedy here. <laughs> He's typing away on his iPad because he hates capitalism and he's writing about socialism is an important thing it's never actually been tried. Well, I'm offended! You kneel in front of the flag, I'm offended! I was in two wars! I'm offended! Kurt was personally recruited by Andrew Breitbart. <laughs> wow, you thought the Avengers was crazy. <laughs> Post-credits scene, Kurt Schlichter working out in the gym. <laughs> at the Bart. comedy club. Yeah. The ghost of Andrew Breitbart <laughs> comes floating through the wall. Kurt was personally recruited by Andrew Breitbart, and his writings on political and cultural issues have been reg- uh, oh, no. Is that an example of something? Yeah. <laughs> that was some of his comedy. Yeah. <laughs> and his writings on political and cultural issues have been regularly published. IJ Review, The Federalist, The New York Post, The Washington Examiner, the Los Angeles Times, the Boston Globe, the Washington Times, <laughs> Army Times, the San Francisco Examiner, and elsewhere. No, please, don't, don't abbreviate. <laughs> go, go on, Kurt. We're going to have to get the unabridged one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Read by Kurt. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say, there are a lot of lists in this. Uh, oh, the author. <laughs> How can there be a lot of lists? It's just that. Yeah, it's majority <laughs> lists. Like, I'm not even joking. I guess this might be an example of his comedy. Yeah. Kurt is a Twitter activist, <laughs> at Kurt Schlichter, with over 71,000 followers, which led him to writing, I am a conservative, uncensored, undiluted, and absolutely un-PC. I am a liberal, a conservative's guide to dealing with nature's most irritating mistake, and... Fetch my latte, sharing feelings with stupid people. Yeah, it's really kind natured mm, sense of You can guy. tell that. <laughs> this about the author section is actually fantastic. Like, you know, sharing feelings with stupid people. You know, he's bigging himself up as this. Oh, he's, he's such a really prolific. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just completely kneecaps himself. <laughs> All three e-books reach number one on the Amazon Kindle political humour bestseller list. <laughs> Wow, a real titan of the industry we're dealing with here. We thought Liberty Adams was no. scraping the bottom of the barrel. Look at this motherfucker. In 2014, his book, Conservative Insurgency, The Struggle to Take America Back, 2013 to 2041, was published by Post Trees Press. Kurt has served as a news source, an on-screen commentator, and a guest on nationally syndicated radio programs regarding political, military, and legal issues, including... Fox News, <laughs> Fox Business News, The Hugh Hewitt Show, The Dr. Drew Show, that's Drew, not Dr. Dre. Yeah, for, for clarification, so don't, don't sue us. Don't <laughs> Dr. Dre, please. The Larry Elder Show, The Dennis Miller Show, Geraldo, The John Phillips Show, The Tony Katz Show, PJ TV's The Conversation, The Tamara Jackson Show, The Delivery with Jimmy Byes Jr., <laughs> The Dana Loach Show, The Point, The WMAL Washington Morning Show with Larry O'Connor, <laughs> 
the Derek Hunter Show, or the Derek Hunter Show, I'm not sure. Maybe they just yeah. hunt yeah. Derek. Yeah, hunt Derek. <laughs> Various Derek's hunting. And the Snark Factor, among others. So, as you can see, about 60% of this about the author is literally just, just lists of right-wing bullshit shows. Among others. Yeah. <laughs> Including, but not limited to. <laughs> yeah. A non-exhaustive list of some of the wankiest <laughs> rags going. <laughs> Only the finest publications from our Kurt. The Colonel. Yeah, hey, Colonel, Colonel. You will address me as Colonel, <laughs> sir, I believe I've earned that. You've got the hand of the tree. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of people know, but uh, Jack Nicholson's <laughs> performance in that film was actually inspired by Kurt. Like, I'm gonna rip the one. eyes out of your head and piss at your dead skull! You fucked with the wrong Marine! I'm offended! Kurt appears weekly on the Cam and Company show and averages four to five other media appearances a week. Kurt is a successful trial lawyer and name partner in a Los Angeles law firm representing Fortune 500 companies and individuals in matters ranging from routine business cases to confidential Hollywood disputes. <laughs> Kerr is a very busy boy <laughs> and also a massive cunt. <laughs> His litigation strategy and legal analysis articles have been published in legal publications such as the Los Angeles Daily Journal and California Lawyer. California Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> he is modelled for the cover of California Lawyer. <laughs> Kurt is a 1994 graduate of Loyola Law School, where he was a law review editor. Also, just put a pin in that because I want to bring okay, something right, to that as well. Right. <laughs> he majored in communications and political science as an undergraduate at the University of California, while also writing a regular column in the student humour paper, The Koala. <laughs> He's such a funny He worked writer. on his school newspaper. <laughs> yeah. He began writing at three years old, scrawling <laughs> on his grandparents' walls in crayon. <laughs> Thus began a long and storied career in novel writing. <laughs> Kurt served as a U.S. Army infantry officer on active duty and in the California Army National Guard, retiring at the rank of full colonel. He wears the silver jump wings of a paratrooper and commanded the Elite First Squadron 18th Cavalry Regiment. He wears the silver jump wings of a paratrooper. He never <laughs> known them. Right? Yeah. He stole them off a veteran. Uh, 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 meet and greet ones. He stole them off a veteran with Alzheimer's. <laughs> Oh, the 18th Cavalry Regiment. I didn't think they still had cavalry. Yeah, yeah. This was in the Confederate Army. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or it's just him yeah. riding about with a sword. <laughs> on a mule. On a blind, pox-ridden <laughs> mule. Whistling Dixie. <laughs> That's the name of the mule. Yeah. <laughs> a veteran of both the Persian Gulf War and Operation Enduring Freedom, Kosovo. He is a graduate of the Army's Combined Arms and Services Staff School, the Command and General Staff College, and the United States Army War College, where he received a Master of Strategic Studies degree. Sorry, this final line, it's yeah. like, it's absolutely the most <laughs> telling thing. Yeah, I hope this final line is a is a sign of things to come in this book. It's part of, it's one of the things that gets me most excited for reading this. Please, go ahead. He lives with his wife Irina, and his favourite calibre is 45. <laughs> What a prick! <laughs> what a fucking prick! <laughs> Amazing! What, a, what an intro to the man, the myth, the legend. Miss 45. <laughs> yeah. His yeah. favourite calibre is 45. Yeah. It's like, shut up! Just <laughs> shut up, you ass. Any calibre would do for punching through his fucking flesh, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? Bitch bones. <laughs> 22 for his bitch bones. Yeah, so, like I say, there's a lot of sort of wasted words in that. I've never really seen so much filler anything. in an about the author section. I mean, a lot of about the author sections are literally a paragraph, a paragraph. because there's not really much to say, yeah. is it? So, yeah. Oh, he, he writes novels yeah. and he lives in a house with his family. Yeah, you can only achieve an erection at gunpoint. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like I say, there's a couple of bits and pieces here that obviously I thought Kurt didn't really elucidate very much on. So, obviously, the first thing I thought, you know, he's a senior columnist at townhall.com mm. so I thought you know we could probably dive into what is townhall.com he obviously he talks up his military career a lot which is interesting because there's not a lot of detail on his actual army career so the extent to which he saw any real active duty is kind of difficult to ascertain because the way he words a lot of things is kind of 
interesting <laughs> in a way that you kind of get used to when you listen to a lot of people who like to talk up their military careers who didn't really do very much. I was going to say, it's uh, it's so rare to find that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's all a bit career. Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking Mark Francois. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Myself, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. He was in the US Army. He joined the military like 35 years ago, but like I say, the extent to which he actually mm. saw any kind of active duty, I don't really know. I'm not the person to answer those sorts of questions. Mm. I am not accusing him of anything but I feel it's fairly reasonable to say I think he's just leaving a lot unsaid because he'd rather you fill in the gaps in your mind and imagine him as Steven Seagal in a, an action movie rather than just tell the truth which is that he probably had a very very unremarkable boring career mm. in the National Guard and really didn't do very much outside of the very few times that the part of the California National Guard that he was a part of were actually activated which were for national disasters and to guard bases after 9-11. Mm. So the other part of it as well is the Loyola Law School. The only thing I have to add about that is just just merely to point out something that Kurt for some reason doesn't point out, which is that it's a private Catholic school, <laughs> which I found kind of interesting. Oh. Um, so that's a part of I don't know if he remains a good Catholic boy to this day. I'm sure he does. I'm sure, I'm sure he does. I hope his stand-up comedy is wholesome and doesn't involve any <laughs> curse words or blasphemy. Oh my god, Jesuit stand-up. <laughs> Franciscan stand-up. Yeah, Franciscan stand-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
infiltrated yeah. the American right wing. Yeah. That's <laughs> no, it's shocking. <laughs> Under the name Salem <laughs> Media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Baal is the king. <laughs> yeah. So it's sort of currently operated by a guy called Stuart Epperson, co-founded Salem Media Group. He's also the president of the Council for National Policy. So basically, that's just another Heritage Foundation. <laughs> yes. So it's just yeah. another of these kind of rich business magnates who is a Christian fundamentalist, incredibly right-wing individual who uses his money in order to flood propaganda that helps his business interests, basically. It's um, funny how you can be some billionaire magnate, like you say, mm. and somehow also a Christian fundamentalist. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you seem to very no, much misunderstand yeah, the fundamentals it, exactly. of Christianity. It's the classic Christianity Reagan magnate. era yeah. evangelical worship the dollar. The yeah, yeah. Dollar. But yeah, the only other thing that I just wanted to point out yet is just the fact that his wife Nancy, another Reagan callback, <laughs> is currently on the board of the international Christian broadcaster Trans World Radio, which is kind <laughs> That's refreshing, you know, so, yeah. that there's actually, you know, at least some of them are pro-trans, which is nice yeah, to see. Yeah, that is nice to see. Uh, Nancy Epperson, Trans World Radio, uh, transgender icon. <laughs> yeah, we love to see it. Kerr, obviously, he talks about having 70,000 Twitter followers there. On his personal website, he talks about having 30,000 followers, so for some reason that's actually outdated mm, mm. Uh, compared to a printed book from about six years ago. He actually has just under half a million Twitter followers now because Donald Trump discovered who he was while he was president and began to spread his views. God, is there to, no uh, end to the damage that... <laughs> Fuck, cool. <laughs> but I just thought oh. I'd, give you, I'd give you an idea of some of the things that he has written about. The first one, I think, probably the most illuminating one. November 28, 2022, it's time to escalate. This comes just about a week after the Club Q murders took place. Great timing there, Kurt. Also, Kurt was one of the many voices who decided to use that atrocity to argue that uh, if the victims hadn't been so gay, then they wouldn't be so dead now. Which is actually is a very nice thing to have said after a mass shooting. I'm sure you'll agree. Especially when it's someone like Kurt Schlichter or any of those fuckheads that say this sort of shit. Where it's like, no, literally, man, like, if someone were to shoot you, you genuinely would only have yourself to blame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. if you weren't Kurt Schlichter, I would not have shot you. Do you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Well, I think things like that are uh, enough to make me want to repeatedly shoot Kurt Schlichter in the face and neck mm. in Minecraft. <laughs> you can't get me now, Kurt. That's legally protected speech, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what? We're not supposed to microaggress people. We're not supposed to assume people's gender. You can't offend anybody anymore. <laughs> So all I have to say is see you in Minecraft, Kurt. <laughs> I'll knock on your door in Minecraft. In Minecraft, and I will use my Minecraft gun <laughs> to blow your Minecraft fucking head off. <laughs> this is all protected speech, this uh, is all a joke, so... Okay. Excellent, I'm really glad we've yeah. discovered this, this yeah, is great. Exactly. I love Minecraft. Yeah. It's just a joke. <laughs> anyway, a word from our sponsor, Minecraft. Yeah, <laughs> yeah proud to <laughs> our first sponsorship deal. Uh, with Minecraft, we're in our new server where you will be allowed to kill Kurt Schlichter for real, in the real world, in his home. <laughs> so, a couple here, just to really give you the mind of Kurt Schlichter. October 28th, the left is in complete denial about their election chances. Talking about the upcoming midterm election. <laughs> Um, the red wave, is it? Yeah, oh, don't worry, he, he's, he's going to talk about that. How twisted must you be to justify cutting apart kids? Got a big transgender flag there as the picture with the headlights. No Ooh, one's uh, cutting kids apart. Yeah. No coming, one's doing that. Yeah, right? Coming from a man whose main claim to fame is having joined the military mm. at a young age, which is a, a, a kind of an interesting uh, contradiction, mm. you might say. The Democrats are screwing themselves over, and I don't understand why. Be caring for the Libs' feelings when the red wave hits. November 8th. It's election day. November 9th. <laughs> election hangover. November 10th. That could have gone down. <laughs> That's fantastic. Why <laughs> climb down, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, remember to feel sorry for him when we absolutely smash him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that could have gone So that out. was obviously uh, Smarty Pants, Kurt Schlichter there, using his uh, big brain degree he got from war college there <laughs> to uh, absolutely cunt himself in public. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So yeah, he went to war college and fucking Jesus University. <laughs> Fuck, Catholic as well, so guilty Jesus, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. Guilt Christ. <laughs> the guilt Christ. 
So, yeah, I hope that that gives you some idea. Um, if, if you didn't know who Gert Schlichter was, which, you know, fair enough, mm. why the fuck would you want to? I hope that gives you some idea of who he is. Obviously, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of who Kurt really mm. is. Down <laughs> dirty and deep with Kurt Schlichter. Oh, I find that illuminating. What an interesting man. Yeah, what an interesting guy. I'd love to read a book written by him. Well, good job, Joe. <laughs> You won't believe your luck. Look, you know us guys, we like to spend forever talking in circles before even uh, cracking the book open. But, you know, that's what you tune in for, that's what you do. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, I suppose it's time to dive balls deep into <laughs> Colonel Kurt Schlichter. <laughs> I think we'll start with the preface just because, you know, we'll get a feel for our man, for our, our opposite number. So, uh, let's begin. That's the title of the show. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Preface. <laughs> just, How often that happens? He just starts with the biggest fucking lie ever. This novel is not an eager fantasy of a future that I or any other sane person wants. <laughs> Sure it isn't, yeah. It's like he's literally put that in there because someone just said yeah, that because, word for word Yeah, to because him. every time he writes yeah. a book, that's what everyone says. Rather, it is a warning. It or something very like it, could represent America's future. If we continue down the path we have embarked upon, and we must reverse that course before it is too late, we still can, if we choose to. Just, just want to point out this book, it, it came out in 2016. Mm, yeah, oh my... <laughs> but it, don't worry, it's the left you need to worry about. <laughs> Yeah, okay. The key feature of a democratic republic is less that each participant has the capacity to win than that each participant has the capacity to lose and accept that loss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how right you that are! That could have right? gone better. Yeah. <laughs> Love the fact that he's used that could have gone better as a title yeah. for an article because I'm just going to keep saying <laughs> yeah. it throughout yeah. this whole fucking thing. That's just his life, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> He'll chisel out on his fucking tombstone <laughs> in Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh, that's the red wave, mate. Yeah. <laughs> the red menace. <laughs> that's what we call the yeah, the red, the red menace. menace. They can lose gracefully because they believe they have been heard. That the system is fundamentally fair. That it is not rigged. So when they lose, they accept their loss and continue to press for their preferred candidates and policies through the existing system. Chaos, violence, upheaval, <laughs> while not unknown even in recent decades, these are entirely foreign to a healthy United States of America. <laughs> This is already the best book we've ever read. Yeah. I really wish there was a forward as well as a yeah, preface yeah, yeah. to this one. I wish there was like an update. Yeah, yeah, one. that could have gone better. That could have gone better. <laughs> the idea of ending the system, of truly disrupting the status quo, does not arise in a healthy democratic republic. But I fear that our republic is no longer healthy. They <laughs> pushed me down immensely. <laughs> in fact, I fear there is an elite distinguished both by its cultural and political progressivism and its geographical concentration in the cities and on the coasts that is seeking to disenfranchise the rest of the population by altering the rules that competing interests have until now played by. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> this idea is well that the elite are inherently progressive. We've just talked about how the site for which he calls himself a senior columnist was previously run by the Heritage Foundation and is currently run by Salem Media Group, both of whom are just fronts for billionaire elitists to push their regressive political ideology. So again, this isn't just his fantasy. This is outright a lie. Yeah. <laughs> He's knowingly just lying to his audience yeah. for money. This isn't a fantasy. I'm just lying to you. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe yeah. you. So yeah. There is a distinction. To be yeah. fair, yeah. in hindsight, it's the first line is... I, I, I'm finding it easier to believe. <laughs> yeah. It's a fantasy for you. Yeah, for I'm him. selling it's you. Purely a grip. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. There was a time when politicians did not seek to win the presidency by the thinnest of margins, over 50%, or indeed under 50%. <laughs> <laughs> Now. Where the president was the president of all Americans, where he, brackets, or she, did not encourage his supporters to reward our friends and punish our enemies. He, or she, did not label millions and millions of Americans as 
deplorable and irredeemable. There was a time when presidents did not attempt to escape the legitimate input of Congress through executive decrees and appeals to unelected judges who all seem to have graduated from the same dozen liberal universities. <laughs> what a fucking piece of shit. Oh, no. The fucking egg on your face, you <laughs> dumb cunt. Also, I just, I've got to say, like, yeah, calling millions of Americans yeah. deplorable. Trump literally called, like, Latin mm -hmm. Americans rapists. Yep. Dead children. He attacked dead children. Like I say, this guy's popularity skyrocketed yeah. under Trump because Trump noticed me senpai mm. And he's like literally just describing everything that happened because of Trump and precisely because America is fundamentally unfair. Yes. That people fundamentally are not heard. That it is rigged. And it's rigged in his favour. And then at the moment he thought that Hillary was going to win, now he's just having a fucking hissy fit and basically being like, we should go and just kill the Clintons. <laughs> Like, this is the preface for his novel. Yeah, yeah. There's just a rant about yeah. politics. And yeah. it's like, yeah. fair enough, obviously it's a political novel. No, this is not an eager fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Hillary Clinton's address, let's go get her. Oh my god. There was a time when the media prodded and poked every candidate and leader instead of targeting only the opponents of their preferred candidates. There was a time when reasoned debate was possible where an opponent's argument was honestly framed and, and debated on that basis. Oh yeah, Kurt. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I really hope for your sake, Kurt, that I'm not about to read the other 200 <laughs> pages of this book and find that you're full of shit. Where an opponent's argument was honestly framed and debated on that basis instead of misrepresented and the points raised ignored in favour of personal slanders and cheap snark. <laughs> Doesn't one of the shows he's a regular feature on? The like, snark, the factor, snark yeah. factor or whatever. Also, you know, Trump. Yeah. He had yeah. like fucking nicknames yeah, for everyone. 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 And yeah. Pocahontas yeah. and Pocahontas all of that. Sleepy, Sleepy Joe, Joe, you know. Little Adam Shear. Yeah. That is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so remember that if you read a critique of this novel accusing me of hoping to see the future People's Republic depicts. <laughs> Did he actually just piss and learn preemptively in the preface of his book about what people yeah, are going to say how, about it. How badly yeah. everyone's going to yeah. shit all over his So when people. they tell you that this book is full of shit, don't you yeah, believe them? Don't you believe them? Because Hillary and America and <laughs> the flag. <laughs> These norms, laws and customs, along with our constitution, are what holds our country together. But these are also the very things that our cultural elite attacks, undercuts, and weakens. After all, these are obstacles to their power. They are meant to be obstacles to rule without restraint. They are designed to be employed by other citizens to check and balance those who would rule without accountability. When the no like This has aged so well, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when you think of like Roe v. Wade being overturned. All of these completely undemocratic yep. things that they regularly the judges engage in. Have just yeah, the, and all of them do. You don't yeah. care about laws and customs and the constitution. We need to escalate in the face of mass shootings. The victims of shootings are the problem. Voter ID laws need to be brought in and more gerrymandering mm -hmm. to prevent non-white people from voting in elections. But no, you know, it's actually that you love the checks and balances <laughs> of <laughs> power. It's like, go fuck yourself, you absolute fucking... I don't know, what do you call it? Nonce. <laughs> yes, you confirmed yeah. nonce. <laughs> on Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> How the on my Minecraft server. <laughs> When the norms, laws, and our constitution are ignored for short-term political advantage, those who would do so likely imagine that it is merely an expedient measure, that somehow, down the road, we will return to normal again. No, they don't. It's your side that do it, and yeah, they exactly. do it to get closer yeah. to fascism. Yeah, exactly. But it is not that easy. It is not that simple. You cannot expect that your opponent will placidly continue to abide by the old rules, even as you reap the advantages of the new ones. If you push and push, Eventually there will be a pushback. Is that a promise, Kurt? Yeah, okay. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> there will be a reaction. And we may not be able to control we. Something that's we. <laughs> yeah. I'm not uh, standing with these guys. Uh, we. <clears throat> you just sit there and incite rebellion. You know, we, uh, we really need to do something about this. Because when you change the rules, you change the game. 
And when you change the game, it might not be into a game you're prepared to play and win! This novel explores what might happen, how the forgotten half of America might react if we choose to change the rules. But we can also choose not to throw away the greatest, freest nation in the history of mankind. And I pray we do. What's the greatest and freest nation in the history of mankind? Like Tibet or something? <laughs> Cuba. Cuba. <laughs> Cuba. <laughs> Cuba. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it will reveal it at the end of the novel. <laughs> oh my god. That is so fucking dumb. Very Ben Shapiro. Yeah, very Steven Seagal, although <laughs> yeah. perhaps yeah. somewhat more coherent than Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, Seagal's whole thing with like the Catholics and the mm. cartels and everything, it's very, very unique. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, it's just that textbook bullshit where they just cloak themselves in free speech and democracy and loving America so much, when the only things they like about America are its bloody genocidal history. Yeah. Everything else uh, is sickening to them. They uh, want all of it gone. They love the loopholes that they can use <laughs> yeah, to exactly. bring about the downfall of, yeah, of the Republic the of the yeah. United yeah, States yeah, exactly. of America. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. You listen to Nick Fuentes and he's one of the few that's willing to just yeah, say yeah. it out loud. We need to get Trump back in and then have yeah. no more elections. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Chapter one. Stop talking! Alright. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> chapter, chapter one in the last chapter. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Stop talking! The young man in the passenger seat wisely did as he was told, but he kept loudly breathing in short, shallow puffs. He was scared as he should be. Kelly Turnbull, behind the steering wheel, was merely ready, his breathing slow but deep and steady. So we're, we're, oh, we're rhyming, rhyming couplets now. <laughs> it's a rap, isn't it? <laughs> oh god, don't. <laughs> I, feel, I feel pretty sure that this book is going to get onto the topic of like the filthy rap music. Yeah, oh, it I'm sure it will. Uh, Kelly Turnbull preferred classical music like Wagner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do find it very interesting that he's chosen to call his like protagonist Kelly. Yeah, it's, it's an like, interesting one. Turnbull. Kelly like, Turnbull. Very strange name. Brett Hawthorne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of joined the yeah. pantheon, the blind man pantheon. <laughs> I wonder how um, how much he weighs in his underwear. I hope he specifies. <laughs> how um, how hairy is he? Yeah. Which hair is he? Is it a sexy amount of hair? <laughs> Just, <laughs> Just the right amount. Yeah. One paragraph in and. I don't need to change my trousers. <laughs> Turnbull stretched out the fingers of his right hand, his shooting hand. He felt the pressure of the sixth gen Glock 19 in his belt. We're gonna, we're gonna, sixth we're gonna get it. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, get yeah, all of yeah. the way too much detail on guns. Does he call it arena? <laughs> He mentally ran through the motions, left hand on the door handle, pushing it open, swinging out onto his feet as his right hand retrieved the pistol, bringing his hands together to grip it, taking aim and rapidly putting two 9mm hollow point rounds into the faces of each of the three gangbangers now staring at them from the crosswalk. The gangsters decided to keep walking. There weren't many cars to jack anymore out on the roads outside secure sectors, but something about this guy told them that the cast benefit analysis of potentially grabbing a working ride versus dealing with the hard case in the driver's seat was not going to work out in their favour. What do you think it was that gave him that impression? <laughs> <laughs> the fucking tweakers glare <laughs> whilst he was reaching out <laughs> yeah. fucking trousers. Even dirt bags have intuition and they prudently obeyed theirs. The light turned green. Naturally, one of the few working traffic lights left in Los Angeles had to be right there, and Turnbull pressed the gas. The Dodge was nearly 20 years old, but it still ran fine. <laughs> Turnbull had made sure of that before he bet his life on it. He's a mechanic as well. <laughs> yeah, he he's a grease monkey. Yeah, yeah. I bet he's, oh a, he's a fucking horse wrangler as well. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee, I guarantee you. I guarantee you he rides yeah, a horse yeah, 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 yeah. at some point. <laughs> he catches a wild horse and breaks it, and he names it Kelly after himself. Yeah. <laughs> This feels very much like a sequel to True Allegiance. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Headcanon, guys, this is the sequel to True Allegiance we've all been waiting for. He had gone east right through the same part of Pico with his parents a thousand times as a kid. Most of Los Angeles was prosperous then, not just the parts behind the fences and the guards where the rich people now partied <laughs> while everyone else fought over scraps. And I bet the rich people are all left wing. Yeah, they're they? all Latin comments. <laughs> oh my god, it's literally Cameron Mitchell from Deadly Prowling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the penthouses, yeah. and, and there ain't no music down there. <laughs>
<laughs> Do you know what? I think we should make it our mission from now on to have that scene in its <laughs> yeah, entirety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 27 years in the filth and the dirt of the street, and there ain't no music down there. You watch the people in the streets killing, raping each other, pumping dope through their veins while big men like you sit in the fancy penthouses and at the poor slab rotten hell. Like, if this is page one, I'm beginning to imagine the rest of this book is gonna basically play out like if our version of White House Down actually <laughs> yeah. happens on screen. Lincoln's gold is gonna make an appearance. James Woods is gonna be yeah. here soon. On those drives, everyone had a car back then, and you could always find gas. His dad used to listen to talk radio before all the radio came under the fairness guidelines and morphed into straight up propaganda. Oh my god. Yeah, because right wing talk radio right now is not just straight up propaganda, is it? He's just listed a list yeah. of all the radio shows he goes on. It's like, Kurt, please, yeah. don't bullshit a bullshit. Like, come on. That's why you put it at the end of the book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thought it was too obvious, too obvious, obvious to yeah. put it at the beginning. The shrunken media here. You didn't need a lot of outlets when they were all spewing the same thing. Merely regurgitated the government policy du jour. Yeah, because that's not like what happens now, is it? Uh, regular <laughs> contributor to <laughs> Fox News. Yeah, okay, sure thing, mate. They merely regurgitated the government policy du jour with a healthy dose of hate for the enemies within and without. The villains were always the same. The, re <laughs> the religious, the hard-working, the liberty-minded. <laughs> The ones who refused to kneel. <laughs> the liberty minded. Liberty Adams. <laughs> Big Mike Adams. <laughs> and especially bad were the ones over there. On the other side of the border. In the red. Turnbull distinctly remembered being right on this very same block, listening to KABC radio and hearing about how the country was about to collapse if the big banks didn't get bailed out. That was late 2008, right before Obama was first elected, and things really started heading downhill. What I love about like the way they will name check like Obama is the way that he's always the devil in yeah. those <laughs> when the, all of the problems with Obama is that everything he did was capitulation to yes. the Republicans and an attempt to impress them. Most of the small businesses that had lined Pico were long gone. Some boarded up, others just abandoned when the owners fled east. They were usually referred to as worms, the ones who were beneath contempt for rejecting the paradise that progressivism offered. Now piles of trash lined the sidewalks and a few people squatted in the urine-soaked doorways, <laughs> glaring at those lucky enough to have cars. <laughs> A few blocks north, running parallel to Pico, was the southern part of the wall that blocked off the west side sector from the rest of the city. These derelicts lurking in the ruined buildings along the road were just some of the people being walled out. So the derelicts yeah, was in yeah, reference yeah, to yeah, human yeah, beings. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I was going to refer to Coach Lichter as a fucking <laughs> derelict. <laughs> raving derelict. Yeah. <laughs> Son, you wait here while Daddy tries to talk some sense into this raving derelict. <laughs> Slow down, slow down. Who's been stealing your thoughts? Inside the sector there was order and prosperity, but here, not so much. Here, graffiti helpfully informed passers-by about the local gangs in charge of each little bit of turf. And up above it all, the billboards cheered the big gang that was in charge of everything. The Blues. The people who had been trying to kill Kelly Turnbull since the old United States broke apart. They certainly loved their propaganda. One billboard looming over an abandoned coffee shop offered a picture of a bunch of unsmiling multi-ethnic children with their fists raised into the air, superimposed across their chests. Freedom from hate is true freedom. Report hate mongers, deniers and spies to your People's Bureau of Investigation. This is amazing. This is fucking incredible. This is everything I hoped it would be. In the lower right corner lurked the People's Republic of North America's rainbow flag. <laughs> or at least one version of it. The flag kept changing oh, as one group or another agitated to add its colour to the mix or to move its colour to some position of greater prominence. The billboard had to be six months old because the flag had changed twice since. How many genders do you Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm scared. I 
Okay, so I was thinking about how this is going to get a lot darker and it's not going to be anywhere near as, near as light-hearted and funny and then you realise like, no, this is actually stupid <laughs> this is and the Ben Shapiro. Thing like, no wonder they think that Ben Shapiro is the intellectual yeah. among <laughs> yeah. them. It's like, oh wow, he makes Ben Shapiro look conscious. <laughs> this month, the colour of the top strike was orange. Who or what group orange represented? Turnbull neither knew nor cared. The Ulster Union. <laughs> <laughs> After the United States split up, they called the half that inherited the two coasts a People's Republic. Whee! They dropped the title. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's a new record. Yeah, it's got to be, isn't it? <laughs> I can't remember how quick did Ladies First say Ladies First. Oh, yeah, that was pretty fast. <laughs> might have been like page one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. They called the half that inherited the two coasts a people's republic. Choosing the same hoary old cliché every metal-bedecked third world butcher had grafted under his country's name in the 1960s and 70s. The political media elite resurrected the term as yet another jab at the hated bourgeois primitives who remained in the now independent blue states. It was now a much more benign provocation than the various political pogroms and cultural assaults that followed. Jesus Christ, again, it's just so infuriating, I, like, I doubt this cunt believes any of this shit. No, but, I don't like, really think he does. This no. idea that, oh yeah, no, it's the left that keep attacking and murdering people based on political ideology, isn't it? It's, well, I mean, just look at Bernie Sanders. Yeah, mean, how many yeah. pogroms has he yeah, had? Exactly. The blood on his head. Yeah. <laughs> they drive cars into crowds regularly. They're a red state that are making it legal yes. to drive your drive car into, into yeah. protesters. Butchering children, yeah. abusing children yeah. is a right that yeah. they should have in their minds. Yeah. But the greatest debate we ever had with Nazis was World War II. It was fucking Normandy beef. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the only fucking debate you have with a Nazi. Yeah. Don't yeah. shoot them, <laughs> let them burn. The blue elite was determined to grind the faces of their opponents into the dirt. Of course, it was not THE People's Republic, but only SOME People's Republic. Republic. And in fact, wow, imagine that. <laughs> imagine if there was like a giant republic on the continent of North America that was like very, very specifically designed oh to be God. not the people, yeah, yeah, but yeah. merely some people. Could you imagine the anger that that would inspire? <laughs> And push back against the elites that that might inspire. I bet if that were to happen, Kurt would be right side by side. <laughs> and in fact, it was not much of a republic at all. The blue elite had always felt that when the people have a voice, they often say the wrong thing. They gagged those unworthy of input into their own governance, a group conveniently consisting of everyone not within the blue elite. The blue elite. Blue elite. I wonder who he's yeah. means by the blue elite. I wonder who, who, who that could be. And the, <laughs> these reds, these yeah, reds. I wonder yeah. who, who he means. By that. <laughs> oh, oh, it's very oh, subtle yeah, yeah. metaphors. He's, he's a beautiful writer. <laughs> but none of the people cared much about what the elite was calling the country anymore. Its name was really the least of their problems. Reds, blues, what did it matter if your kids were crying because you didn't have the ration coupons you needed to get them some dinner? Well, then pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you complaining about? Get a job, bitch. Yeah. Do as you're told. Yeah. Father rule of law. This is the medicine you prescribe to everyone who doesn't yeah. benefit under your yeah. people's Which is basically everyone. Yeah. Everything is pull yourself up by your bootstraps and keep your head down mm. until they're faced the most minor inconvenience <laughs> of not being able to grift yeah. fucking poor people anymore and just rule over them like medieval kings. And now it's just <clears throat> um, we need to murder all of my clips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It needs yeah. to happen right now. Yeah. Turnbull glanced left through his window and observed a long line sneaking out of what had been a Ralph supermarket back 20 some years ago. Now it was a people's market with trash blowing across its nearly empty parking lot. The people in the queue looked like something out of an old photo from the Great Depression. Grey, tired, Salon. They were all black and white. Yeah, they, were black and white. <laughs> they were all doing the Charleston <laughs> and wearing suit suits. There were always lines outside the secure sectors whenever Turnbull came over, but this time something was different. The crowd's mood, even viewed from a passing sedan, seemed unsettled, tense, angry. 
A fist fight over replacing the queue broke out. Everyone simply stared as the two ragged men pummeled themselves <laughs> into bloody heaps for priority in purchasing three cans of generic beans imported from Argentina. I love generic beans. <laughs> Argentine <laughs> generic beans. My favourite of the generic beans. The store must have food today, said his passenger. You really don't have food lines in the flyover? He was skinny like everyone else who wasn't elite, and maybe 17 years old, the kid of some rich guy back in Kansas City whose wife made off with him to leverage a divorce settlement and who got caught behind the border when the PRNA decided to shut it down for good. Wow. Such careful and evocative world building. Yeah. <laughs> it was because of some bitch. <laughs> Daddy was willing to pay Turnbull's price to get him out. An especially hefty one, because Mummy would certainly raise the alarm. And there's nothing the People's Bureau of Investigation liked better than catching an infiltrator. What the PBI did to infiltrators, spies, was distinctly unpleasant. Did they make them read fucking Kurt yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They had to read every article on town. <laughs> Don't call it flyover. That's going to be your country soon. It's called the United States. You say the Pledge of Allegiance right now ten times in reverse. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> of course, now there was no flying over it anymore. The PR claimed it was the US that shut down the air corridors from the western blue states to the eastern blue states. That was a lie. They just didn't want anyone to see what was happening in red America, even from 35,000 feet. I love the idea that it's like, oh, this whole, like, the middle of America, yeah. it's, it's all run middle by Republicans, and therefore it's a paradise it's a for paradise. everyone. Yeah. Red states, there are red states right now, you yeah. can just look at the statistics, yeah. and they're all far shitter than <laughs> yes. blue states. Yes. Why? Because Republicans don't even pretend to yeah. give a fuck yeah. because about Because of the hostile contempt. Yeah that Republicans yeah. have to their own people. You, you might call them the sort of elitist view. They have you a could, kind of elite, you could call it that. elitist view. In fact, view. I do call yeah. it that. I'm <laughs> yeah. calling yeah. it In right fact, now. That's what that yeah. word yeah. actually means. <laughs> <laughs> the blue elite, the lefty elites, the, you know, Jacob Rees-Mogg, you know, the metropolitan elite. Yeah. I mean, the accent yeah. with which he said, the metropolitan Could you get any more clear-cut a case of how utterly meaningless that term is for the right mm -hmm. politically? After a moment, the kid asked, Will I really have to join the army? Only if you want to be a citizen. Now stop talking. So he believes in like Roman style. Yeah, yeah, like, Roman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Only if you want to be a citizen. Well, these red states sound absolutely oh, yeah. lovely. It's paradise. Is it like an Israel thing as well? Yeah, the yeah. Palestinian blue states yeah. and the Israeli red. States. We're constantly under attack. Yeah. And insurgents. Oh, this is this is horrible, actually, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> In the first years after the split, there were refugees moving in both directions as people picked a side. But soon the flow from red to blue became a trickle. From blue to red, tired, oh, as their left-wing oh. policies, freed of conservative obstruction, began to bear the bitter fruit they always did wherever tried. Determined not to import the same political pathologies that had ripped apart the old United States <laughs> Congress, now sitting in Dallas, amended the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> if you had not been an adult living in the red at the time of the split and you wanted to vote to be a US citizen, you had to earn the right with a tour in the military carrying a rifle. Why? I thought it was a fucking beautiful one. Shut the right fuck up. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> you take this gun, kill or be killed. If you don't kill this boy, I'll kill you and this boy. God bless the USA. <laughs> what a paradise. What a paradise. I love the idea of telling children that they only have worth if they kill. Yeah, they I tell children them. that all the time. There was no alternative service. No reading stories to juvenile delinquents. No scam make-work gigs for rich kids who didn't want to soil their hands. It's like, um, do you ever mind you? Donald, Donald Trump? <laughs> Any thoughts on that, Kurt? Any thoughts on Donald Trump? Oh, fair enough. Don't bite the hand that feeds, I suppose, eh? Mm. How much um, did your private Catholic school cost you? Yeah. Because I can tell you it was about $350,000. <laughs> you put on camo and served 
And you only got citizenship if you're discharged honorably after your two years. Or you got shot sooner. What? So you get citizenship if you get shot. If you walk do you have to... And they're like, you can do two years. <laughs> and then you get to be a citizen. And you just go, shoot me, daddy. <laughs> Colonel Kurt comes out. In his loo game. Yeah. Like, you're insane, dude. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> If you yeah. believe even one-tenth of this, you're out of your fucking mind. The car shuddered and jerked. Another pothole. Another pothole. Shuddered and jerked. The boy finished up. Another boy hole. I'm loving this book, by the way. <laughs> but there was one nice thing about driving in the impoverished Los Angeles of 2034. The near total absence of traffic, thanks to gas being rationed, when it was available to the non-elite at all, people were finally obeying the urban planners who for decades had wanted them out of their cars and into public transportation. There were plenty of buses, wheezing, dirty buses, oh, driven by unionized drivers who answered to no one and ran up their own personal schedules that bore only a glancing resemblance to the optimistic ones the Transit Authority published. <laughs> he thinks <laughs> socialism is just everyone it's doing whatever. Pure chaos. That's everyone, capitalism, yeah, bruv. Yeah. Each bus driver just owning <laughs> their own bus and deciding yeah. when they do their yeah. own... That's capitalism. Yeah. That's American libertarianism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Christ. Oh, near the intersection of Pico and Livonia Avenue, Turnbull was nearly sideswiped by a bus driver who felt no need to signal as he wheeled his rickety vehicle <laughs> away from the curb and into traffic. On its side was a fading tattered banner depicting an angry woman of ambiguous ethnicity, naturally with her fist in the air, under the superimposed words, women will smash sexism, racism and deny. Women, it's not with a Y instead of an A. Um, a woman of ambiguous <laughs> ethnicity. So what? She was white. Yeah. You couldn't tell if Pirate she was. You couldn't Italian tell if she was Scottish or Irish. Yeah. What are you, yeah. what are you yeah. saying there, yeah. Kurt? Yeah. yeah. What are you saying? I there? wonder what you could possibly mean. But I thought it was the lefties who were They're racist. so intolerant. They're such bigoted yeah. people. Their destination was not far now. Switch out the car, siphon the gas, get on the freeway, get as far east as possible, and make the crossing into Arizona on foot. His mind ran through the checklist again. Food, water, clothing. Sorry, is he, Ill is he illegally crossing the border into Arizona? <laughs> yes, he, yes, sorry, yes, he absolutely is. Well, he's illegally crossed the border into yeah, the people's I'm not bubble. sure if he did. I'm not sure. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. He hasn't specified exactly how he got in. But I have yeah, to assume it's illegal. You have to assume right? it's illegal because, like, they don't let people Surely they wouldn't just let him yeah. walk in. And he said that they've been trying to kill him since yeah, today. Yeah, so. Have to, yeah, so he's an illegal yeah. immigrant. He's an illegal immigrant. Yeah. With a gun. With a gun. Who just <laughs> narrowly avoided murdering, like, three people. Yeah, in the and has kidnapped a child. Yeah. <laughs> so he's child trafficking. His mind ran through the checklist again. Food, water, clothing for the hike. Travel passes with carbon offsets accounted for. Good to go. He had paid enough for them. Blues always talked a good game about being progressive, but they all had their price. <laughs> As if man's corruptible nature is now yeah. somehow yeah. left his yeah. trait. Yeah. <laughs> his weapons, ready to rock if need be. <laughs> his favourite calibre was <laughs> yeah. 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 Hopefully there would be no need. Not that shooting blues made much difference to him. He was a psychopath. Yeah, he was a fucking sociopath. His time in Indian country had disabused him of any illusions about the value of human life in the People's Republic. Okay, good, good, that's nice. <laughs> Watch out, Stephen. Kelly I'd Turnbull. To, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see a martial arts bout between Schlichter and Cigar. <laughs> they're all doing like Ki. Yeah, yeah. Like, pressure point shit. <laughs> <laughs> <Just don't, laughs> yeah, they just, yeah, just go out and it's, it, it was a 48 hour hard fought draw. <laughs> Stay on me. <laughs> you can't hit me, I've got a force field. I've got force field mode on, you can't hit me. Wrap up like a spade around his It was always worse every time he came back, but this time it was a whole new level of bad. He had almost got caught in a mini riot in Santa Monica surveilling the kid before grabbing him. A mini riot? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <Micro -riot. laughs> yeah. It's a pop-up riot. <laughs> 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 
are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, you actually, know, that's just one guy kicking yeah, out. Two people, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two black people walked past. Yeah. <laughs> I narrowly avoided a mini riot. I almost killed all of those people. In all of Turnbull's life, he had never once regretted being too well armed. Never once. <laughs> He's going to say he'd never once regretted killing a man. <laughs> Now an electronic noise derailed his train of thought. <laughs> it gives you the electronic noise. I don't, I don't really know how to pronounce this. Da 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 da. <laughs> Is that an electronic noise? I, I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that as electronic. I'll, I'll edit that bit. I'll edit yeah, it. Put yeah. an electronic filter over my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Turnbull's head swiveled right. Are you fucking serious? I'm sorry. He stammered the kid, digging inside his jacket for his cell phone. Da 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 So that's a cell phone ringing, is it? You just say his phone was ringing. Yeah, you just say his phone rang, Why are you making yeah. fucking noises at me? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? You fucking three years old. I asked you if you had a cell. You said no. By that I foolishly inferred that you didn't have a fucking cell phone. <laughs> We've got to get Matt Berry on one of these. We episodes. really do, yeah. yeah I'd love to have Matt Berry read this. I forgot. The kid replied <laughs> miserably. Turnbull made a mental note to always search his package. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just definitely... checking for lumps, <laughs> officer. You're right, yeah. he's definitely fucking yeah. scared. I told you. Trusting civilians not to be stupid was a bad bet. So there's just, again, mm. more of this yeah, militaristic yeah. fascist. Yeah, guess, yeah no Kirchlichter. It's us that are the fucking yeah. idiots. We're, not we're you. the weirdos. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, we're the weird yeah. ones. Yeah, he's just one of these. We're the wolves. Yeah, exactly. We're the yeah. sheep. Da 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 da. <laughs> that does not it's... convey a noise. No, I know. <laughs> I know. Why I know. are you writing yeah. this? Why are you repeating it? <laughs> Fuck with. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Give it here, genius. The kid handed the phone over and Turnbull fucked him. <laughs> the kid handed the phone over and Turnbull rejected the call. Now roll down your window. The kid complied and Turnbull glided the dodge to a stop in front of a packed bus stop. What's the unlock code? Uh, one, two, three, four. Of course it is, Turnbull replied. And then he yelled over his passenger out to the puzzled riders waiting at the curb. Who wants a free phone? After a few moments, a young Hispanic woman stepped to the window. Free? I'll take it. Hopefully she would lead anyone following them on a merry chase across the length and breadth of the Los Angeles public transit system before being killed. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's eyes welled with tears. Apparently mummy had never let her magical unicorn child in on the fact that uh, <laughs> 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 a magical unicorn. <laughs> Turnbull pitied this kid's drill sergeant, assuming the kid had the stones to volunteer. We have to lose this car. Now listen, you do what I say when I say. Do you understand? Yeah. The kid said petulantly. Okay. Take off your fucking <laughs> Look, I'm just saying what we all know Kurt was thinking. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Any more surprises for me? Any other cell phones, personal computers, trackers, smoke signalers? Anything on you? No. Good. I'm gonna have to be sure. Yeah, snapping on a latex guy. <laughs> the neighbourhood between Pico and the 10 freeway felt abandoned. As if everyone had just vanished and nature had started. The buildings were decaying, and the yards had gone feral in the rows of houses liberated from their owners in the wake of the split. Someone had left a broken couch on the sidewalk, and someone else had set it on fire. In the midst of all the emptiness were more lies. There was another billboard, brand new but stuck incongruously in a deserted neighbourhood. This one depicted a smiling young blonde woman, well fed and happy, and therefore likely a fantasy. I left Texas and tyranny to come here. Be grateful for your food and freedom. And in the corner, yet another version of the rainbow flag. Why, what is their obsession with the idea that the left is just the gay rights movement? Gays. Like, just gays. rainbow flag. Yeah. So the blue zones are run by gays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess gay rights is actually a cover for authoritarian tyranny and starving people. Mm. The top stripe on this one was mauve. Turnbull had no idea what race, ethnicity, or personal lifestyle choice oh, that tint represented either. <laughs> Everything is hate. From yeah, this protagonist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He's just a hateful. And position. everything else is just lies. Yeah. Like he's talking about all oh, these evil propaganda billboards up everywhere. What's this, Kurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah, this yeah, I just yeah. found in my hand? Oh, I wonder. I wonder if there's a 
any, uh, any political views being expressed by this? What word would you use to describe oh, yeah. every page in this book? We're talking about billboards, right? Propaganda billboards. I don't know if you've ever like seen photographs of this place called the United States of America, mm. but no, I've never seen it. It's uh, littered with fucking billboards telling you how Christ is going to return and judge you. That's not allowed, Joe. You yeah. can't. You've that's got, propaganda. Yeah, they wouldn't have that in that's a red illegal. state, would they? See, Joe, that's the thing. That's what these lefties don't understand. Freedom of speech goes both ways, okay? It means sometimes people are going to say things that you don't like, <laughs> and you just have to pick up a rifle and shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the pioneers would have wanted. Yeah. But Lewis and Clark would have wanted. Hätte ich meinem Anführer zugehört, ich wäre heute daheim. War jung und dumm, war ein armer Jung, auf den Abweg geführt und gemein. Friend or enemy? I'm a friend. You're a liar. <laughs>